All right, so here's a, a second part to the little video that uh, I put together to show how I was trying to do displacement with alpha maps, and I wasn't able to succeed. This is um, my model again, and I'll turn on high quality rendering, and you see that I've got an alpha map applied, and now in addition to an alpha map, I also applied a displacement map, and after fiddling with it a long, long time, this is the best I was able to achieve, and you can see there is some thickness. Um, if I zoom in here, it'll get pixelated, but you can see it's added thickness. But I'm getting all of these weird artifacts, uh, especially where the shadows are. It's almost like I'm seeing the shadows right here are actually showing through, or maybe that's supposed to be a shadow being cast on the thickness. But in any event, it looks terrible. If I go back to full scale there, and as you can see, it takes seven and a half minutes to render, which is just a horrible. If I uh, if I was, for instance, to come in here and frame up in a similar way, like like so ish, right? And I was to come in here and turn off the uh, texture and turn on my actual grill that I created that actually has thickness and was to render that and I'll pause it here for a second okay the renders done and if I bring this one over you can see here's the version with actual thickness and it only took a minute 34 seconds to render now the reason that the render time is so horrendous and did I save it no like an idiot I didn't um, uh, the reason that the render time is so horrific, if I turn off the surface and go back to the texture, has to do with uh, the settings that I have to set up for the approximation editor. Now, the way that I, I set this up was that, as you know, I have a texture here. And uh, if I double-click on it, you can see uh, a sample of the texture, right, which is just this alpha map repeated over and over. I thought there was a way to view a bigger image of this, but I guess not. Um, in any event, uh, it's basically just this alpha map that you're seeing right here. And this is plugged into this is plugged into the alpha. You can see grill alpha dot transparency. So this is plugged into the transparency of this uh, of this guy. And then what I did is in the uh, in its shader group um, of this guy. Uh, actually, if I go to the shader group, there you go. If I go to the to the shader group for this uh, for this guy into its displacement material, I took a copy of this material right here this I'm sorry this material this texture and this 2d placement node I just copied these two created a, a new one and then I put it into uh, copied it into the displacement node uh, material of this of this uh, material shader group right so basically and that produces this displacement and then, uh, of course, to control the height of the displacement, you go to the, uh, uh, well, the first thing you have to do is create, is set up the bounding box. This is part of the thing that's really frustrating with, with Maya and Mental Ray. There's 80,000 places you need to change things. So the first thing you have to do is go into the material itself, right? Then go to its, uh, where is it at? You have to go to its, now I gotta find it. Basically, it's shape node, which is right here in the dis in the uh, hierarchy. And in the shape node, there's displacement map. And you bring this down. Now, when you're rendering displacement with mental ray, feature displacement doesn't do anything. This is only used if you're rendering in Maya. However, the bounding box does matter. So the height that you've got this thing set up to displace to, uh, you come in here and you hit this calculate bounding box, and it will calculate these values out, which is very important for doing displacements with mental ray. So I've already set that up properly. Then the next thing you have to do is decide how high you want to displace, uh, you want the displacement to be. And that is controlled in the color balance of the texture you're using for the displacement. And I've got it in this case set to 0 0.6. Uh, 06. 
So that's giving me the height that I want to displace it. And then finally, the quality of the uh, displacement you get, <clears throat> whereas if you're uh, rendering with Maya, you control that through this feature displacement. If you're rendering with Mental Ray, you do it with a uh, approximation, a displacement approximation node. So if I select this surface, I've already gone into uh, the approximation editor. Now bring that over. And if I select this surface, you can see that it's got a mental ray displacement approximation node that I created. By coming over here and you select the surface and hit create, and it will create this mental ray displacement approximation node. And I can now come in here and edit it. And if I come into its settings, uh, the reason this thing is taking so frigging long, seven and a half minutes to render, is uh, I come in here and I like to use spatial, right? And just very quickly, what spatial does, as I understand it, is you come down here and you set the length. Right now, if you look at my grid, if I turn my grid on, oops, not that, if I turn my grid on, Hold on, I'll get this yet. Uh, okay, if I turn my grid on, I'm sorry about that, and I turn my ground off so you can see the grid. Okay, each of the dark squares is one unit. Okay, there's 12 units in this grid. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 units. And I've split each unit in half. So if this is one inch, each of these is half an inch. But in units, um, you know, this, this distance is 0.5 units. So if you look at the width of one of these guys from the top, if I was to pick this surface and isolate it, right, and you look at the width of one of these guys here, I'm assuming that's the smallest I want this this guy the smallest triangle needs to be approximately the width of one of these edges any larger than that and I'm going to get faceting uh jaggies as it uh, as it tries to triangulate this mesh and so if you look at that um uh from the top view if I come down here uh, and I actually created say a uh, measure tool I I didn't do this I just did it by eye but uh measure and create a distance tool and put a put a mark here and say here okay and then go back to perspective and then come out of isolation mode so I can see the thing I just created uh, go to the outliner and see where it's at uh, apparently it was so close together it only created one go to the top view and see what's going on here Crap, I can't see the... Oh, wait, I know how I can do it. Turn this on. Nope, that doesn't help either. Uh, I can't see the grid with the rest of the thing not isolated. And hold on, I'll get it here. Quit to drop the tool, select this again, isolate it. Let's delete this guy. Okay, let's try it again. Let's create a... Create a measure tool. Uh, measure distance tool. And let's put a point here and a point here. It create. Yeah, okay, I've got two two locators now. So if I uh, go back to perspective and I come out of isolation mode, I'll have a number. You can see that the width of that thing is about 0.1. So uh, so I guesstimated pretty close to uh, what the uh, triangle length, the length of one side of my triangle that I want when it facets this thing. Um, and I did this actually by trial and error. If I try 0.25, it comes out and you get some really horrible jaggies uh, along the surface. So 0.1 is what you really end up needing uh, for this thing. And let me delete that locator so it doesn't confuse me. So I go, if I go back to picking this, oh, shoot, Z. <laughs> Amazing. Hold on. Delete. Drop that tool. Select this guy. And now if I go to look at its displacement node settings again, you'll see that I've got my minimum triangle length. I'm using spatial. 
Um, actually, I came down here and I selected, I like to just say find, find view to start out with, and then I dial this back to 6. Actually, I tried to dial it back to 5 and I started to get jaggies again, so I looks like I have to subdivide this at least 6 times, and the default is 0.25, and I had to drop it to 0.1 to get the resolution necessary to get me the, uh, the displacement that I was getting, which... Uh, like I said, still looks pretty crappy, and it takes seven and a half minutes to render. So if I was to come in here now and uh, render this, and I'll pause this for seven minutes while it re-renders since I didn't have the sense to save it before I did it the last time. Let me pause this again. And so we're back a mere seven minutes later, and this is what we end up with. Once again, you can see it's got thickness, but I'm getting all sorts of weird artifacting, especially you can see in these areas where the shadows are. It's almost as though you're seeing the shadow through the through the mesh or something. It just becomes real blurry in here. So it's you know it's adding thickness, but it just doesn't look right. Something's just not kosher. Um, and then once again, just to review uh, what I had to do. Uh, first, you have to create your displacement image. In the displacement image itself, you control the displacement height by going to the... Uh, uh, get this out of the way here. By going to uh, the, uh, the shape node... Uh, I'm sorry, by going to the, the displacement texture and uh, going to its color balance box here and adjusting the alpha gain. So uh, 0.06 is my is my height. Then, then the uh, next thing you need to do is go to the shape node and calculate the bounding box. And then the next thing you have to do is go and create an approximation node, a displacement approximation node for this surface right here, metal ray approximation node, and I like to use spatial, which uh, and the way spatial works is you tell it the uh, maximum length you want any edge of a triangle when this when it triangulates the surface uh, to be, and uh, we calculated the width of one of these sections as 0.1, so that's the value I used, and then this says, uh, this prevents the minimum and maximum subdivision prevents uh, Maya from going uh, insane and trying to subdivide the mesh too many times so you can set a maximum limit. And uh, at, with this distance of 0.1 I'm very close to this maximum subdivision level of 6 because if I drop this down to 5 and I recalculate this I'll get uh, I'll get some starting starting to see some jaggies uh, in the surface. So six is about the minimum number of subdivisions this has to be subdivided in order uh, to be able to uh, apply the displacement without getting uh, jagged edges, which is attributing to the, to the fact that it takes so long to, uh, or, or uh, is is the reason that it takes so long to render is because this thing is being subdivided quite a bit. In fact, it comes out to be quite a bit more dense than the actual physical version of this mesh that I that I created. As you can see, it only took a minute, you know, a little over a minute to calculate and render this approximately the same view uh, with the actual physical mesh. So that's about the best I've been able to do as far as doing displacement along with. Uh, with transparency. Transparency is pretty easy. You just create an alpha map and you plug it into uh, to this guy's uh, transparency. And for displacement, um, you can either take this the same uh, transparency map. That's my dog scratching in the background if you're hearing that scratching noise. Uh, if I just drop middle mouse drop this into here, you can see I drop it. I can drop it into displacement map. Uh, but a way that works with all metal ray materials is if you go to the uh, to the shader group uh, for the for the material, you can drop this transparency directly into this displacement right here. Middle mouse drag it and drop it into here. Um, and uh, and that'll do the same thing. So you can 
create the displacement map both ways. And then once you have the displacement map created, uh, once again, what's really confusing about Mental Ray is you do practically, I, I've, I've never figured out with anything in here that has any value or any purpose for, because you control the height of the map through the uh, color balance of the texture itself, and you create, and you control the quality of the displacement through the approximation node that you create that's attached to the surface that you're displacing, which is uh, this information right here. And you have several different modes you can use. Like I've already said, I use spatial. There's parametric where you can control the U and V subdivisions. There's uh, regular parametric. I, I don't know what half of these do. Length, distance, and angle. Length is pretty much the same thing as spatial, but you can also control distance and angle uh, to control how, how this thing gets tessellated. Basically, what this does is it controls the level of tessellation so you get a clean uh, displacement without getting all sorts of jagged edges. And basically I use spatial for everything because it's easy for me to wrap my, my head around. I just take the look at the surface that I'm displacing and try to calculate what the smallest triangle is that I want to subdivide this down into. And I set that value down here in length. That'll become the length of one side of a triangle when this gets gets tessellated. And then I set its maximum subdivision level up around 5 to start. And if it still doesn't look quite right, I'll, I'll crank it up in increments of 1 until it stops having any effect. Once you crank this up to a level and it stops having an effect, that means you've reached this, this maximum uh, length here and so making this number any larger won't do any good because it'll stop subdividing because it's met this this length. So these two values here, this maximum subdivision and length work uh, work together. And as far as I know uh, for displacements in mental ray, that's those are the only f things that I have to set and uh, like I said I just can't seem to get any acceptable uh, results using that method. This is the best that I can do and like I said you can see here I'm getting weird weird artifacts especially around where the shadows are being projected so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong but I can't think of anything else to, to try um, and as far as I know I'm setting all the right things in all the right places so I don't know why I'm getting these horrible results.